is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited about today's episode because we're going to be starting seeds that need five to six weeks to get growing. These are seeds like tomatoes, some of our uh, herbs, flowers, and eggplants. So we already got a lot started last week, like our onions, our peppers, and some herbs. But these are these those were much longer maturing herbs than the ones we're starting today. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait to show you all. But before we get started, I did want to talk really quickly about something that has been on my mind that I wanted to talk about because in this year I do want to be kind of getting back to our roots of where we started, being a little bit more transparent and a little more um, having a little more open dialogue with all of you. Because a lot of you have asked, where have your videos been for the past couple of weeks? They've only been, you know, once or twice a week. And by this time, you're used to something like three or four videos a week. I totally understand that. And I really do apologize for that. And I have two answers for why. The first one has been the weather. The weather has been really brutal. In fact, normally by this time, we're kind of ramping up and getting ready for spring, getting things started. And uh, the garden outside is generally you know, thawing and kind of in a, in a warming trend where we can start prepping the beds for spring, getting stuff kind of ready and, and set up. But so far we have not had, we've only had about two days above freezing in about three months. That's how cold it's been here. In fact, right now we're in another, another polar vortex and it's down to about 12 degrees. You can't do a whole lot in 12 degrees. <laughs> the soil's frozen, there's still snow on the ground. And on top of that, why risk getting sick? So there's really not a whole lot we can do outside and that's why the videos have kind of been at a minimum. But as things warm up, we will be doing a lot more and a lot more frequently. The second thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, a health scare that we're having. And I want to turn this kind of also into a PSA for all of you. I kind of consider myself to be healthy. I don't really know what the definition of healthy is because everyone's on a different, everyone's different when it comes to health. But I always consider myself to be pretty healthy. And about six weeks ago, I about seven weeks ago actually now, I noticed a small lump on the back of my neck and I didn't really think anything of it. I, I mean, I'm aware of what lymph nodes are. I was in biology and um, advanced biology and uh, anatomy. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm aware of this stuff, but I never really thought anything of it. I kind of thought, well, I, I just got over a really bad cold, probably nothing. And then it started dragging on and dragging on. And you know the thought of, uh, should I go to the doctor? What if it's nothing? Because it's been like that. You know, I mean, I've gone to the doctor for things and he's like, yeah, give it two days, give it three weeks, it'll be gone. And sure enough, it cleared up. So had I waited in the first place, I could have saved myself a couple hundred bucks and, you know, it would have still fixed itself anyways. So that's kind of where I was mentally. I didn't really think, really think anything of it. And then about three weeks ago, I noticed that it was still there. And then I started kind of doing a little more digging. And the worst thing you can do, first tip to everyone, don't dig. Oh, I wish someone would just come alongside me every single time I start digging and tell you, Luke, every time you look on the internet for dancers, it always ends up with the C word, cancer. Cancer does run in my family, so we are hyper aware of it. Everyone in my family is hyper aware of it. I've lost a lot of loved ones to it. Um, and so I'm very... I'm very hyper aware of it. I'm very sensitive of that. And it really works me up anytime that word comes up. But it just seems like, you know, it's the most unregulated word on the entire internet. You know, and if there's something that is more damage to someone than an actual diagnosis, it's stress. And I talk about all the time how I've really tried to eliminate stress from my life. But, you know, you pull up on the internet all these things and then cancer comes up. Well, then I got really worked up because I'd noticed it had been there for a long time. It wasn't going away. I didn't have any symptoms. It was just, it was just lingering. So the stress really got in the way of me doing videos. I wasn't in the right headspace. And for a content creator, that's very important. And I never really, to, I never really told anyone another big mistake. Tell people, ask people. You know, I didn't tell people because I didn't want to be like the boy who cried wolf and have it be nothing. So I kept it to myself for a very long time and I just let those thoughts just stir. Tip number two, don't do that because then it ended up just causing a whole spiral of stress to where I finally got the courage to even tell Mrs. Emma Gardner because I don't want to worry her that I might have cancer. So I tell her and she said, Luke, just get it taken care of. Just go check it out. 
So I go and check it out and that's when I really got worried because the doctor felt my lymph node and said, we need to order a CAT scan immediately. And when I say immediate, I was there the next day and that normally doesn't happen. So when they say immediately, it gets you a little frightened. And so I was nauseous. I was so worried. They ran blood tests, but they don't give you the blood tests immediately. They make you wait. <laughs> and they always say no call. Uh, it's better to have no call than it is to have a call. So I waited and waited and waited and waited and waited some more. But those two weeks were very, very stressful. In fact, the whole time I was not in the right headspace at all. And, um, and finally, just went, just went to the doctor the other day, got back not only the blood results, but also the CAT scan. And he, uh, <laughs> he came in with a doctor's assistant and, uh, who was in training. And I knew that was a good sign because usually they wouldn't bring in a doctor's assistant to give you a, a bad diagnosis, especially one of this magnitude that I was expecting. And they came in and he had a smile on his face. He's been my longtime doctor for a really long time. And he goes, Luke, good news. You're as healthy as a horse. I don't know what you're worrying about, but let me check it out. And he felt my lymph node and he goes, he goes, yeah, it's benign. It's totally benign. It's just, they pop up. They can go away over time. We might need a, to inject it with a little steroid or to surgically remove it if it really becomes troublesome, but it's not cancerous. There's no cancer markers at all. Everything is clear. You're all good to go. And so that was whew, a relief, a relief. In fact, I don't suffer from high blood pressure, but even my blood pressure was 142 over 82, which is pretty high. And almost immediately, this is how crazy it was. This is how much stress I built up over this, uh, over just waiting and letting this grow on me. My blood pressure, almost five, 10 minutes after getting the, the diagnosis, was back down to 120 over 70. I mean, that's how much stress was just built up. Um, I mean, my muscles were sore. My neck was sore. I was just fatigued. I felt like garbage. I didn't feel like filming. And that's why I'm here right now to tell you guys, yeah, we're gonna get into some fun, but for the past couple weeks, I've not been in a very fun place. And I really appreciate all you being supportive and patient and saying, oh, it's okay, you know, hey, we're here no matter what. That's been great. So yeah, we've got quite a few seeds to plant. So we're growing a lot of different things, like I said, with eggplants and herbs, but you know, we're not growing a ton of different, ton of different craziness when it comes to that. We've grown a lot of them before. The real thing I wanted to talk about was the tomatoes. So we're gonna rifle through these really quick so you can get an idea of what I'm planting and, uh, and then you'll kind of get a rough idea of just how insane this is going to be. So we have the Azoichka tomato, the Polish linguisa, Marian tomato, Tess's land race currant, great white, pineapple, keep them in order there, delicious, marglobe, gold nugget, the golden currant, green zebra, the red centiflor, Japanese black trifel, crimson sprinter, the Norwood Miners, the Galena's Cherry, San Marzano, Chocolate Stripes, Hillbilly, the Peach Blow Sutton, Hartman's Yellow Gooseberry, Gold Metal, Black from Tula, Opalka, the Wisconsin 55, Typhon Mennonite, Gold Rush Current, Rose, the Afghan Orange, Champagne Bubbles, Dr. White Cheese Yellow, Jubilee, Federley, Sheboygan, and Santium. So those are all the tomato varieties. Absolutely insane. And as you know, we are all about our tomatoes here on the channel, so it's gonna be a ton of fun to grow these.
nothing more satisfying than a full tray of plants. It actually worked out perfect. I didn't really plan on this working out so perfectly, but all of our nightshade crops, our peppers, eggplants, and tomatoes, all fit on one tray exactly, which is awesome. And we do have some more gaps over here, but between my other stuff that I'm still waiting on, stuff that I still have to plant that doesn't need quite as much time, will be more than fine. And we have lots of table space so that when these plants grow up and if they need to be transplanted, since we can't have a greenhouse because of our city ordinances, as crazy as that sounds, we can up pot them and have plenty of room for them to grow. And a lot of people were asking why I was using a pump sprayer. And that's just because I didn't, I don't like using a hand sprayer. It's a lot of squeezing back and forth to get the water to come out for the same amount of effort. I can just move my hand around with this wand and it also has a long extension so that as plants grow, I can get it right to where I need it. And I can put the, I can put the nozzle right near the base of the plant so I'm not spraying the leaves, risking things like fungus and mold. Uh, and, and mildews and stuff like that. And also I can reach all the plants from one side of the table. Try doing that with a hand sprayer. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I really had a ton of fun filming this episode and I really do appreciate all you guys for staying tuned as this garden progresses. It's been a lot of fun. It has been slow going, but I promise you as things become you know, more, uh, more like spring and less like winter, we're gonna have a ton more content and at some point we will be going daily and that is very exciting. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe if you're not yet already. Make sure to throw a like up there. It really helps these videos get spread around to more people. And I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you try some of these varieties that we are also growing so you can grow along with us. As always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. Catch y'all later. See ya.